Should you buy Ford Motor Company ticker symbol F? It's had a great run up since October, went from around about $13 a share to $20 a share. And if we just look at the uh, all time chart of Ford, you can actually see it hasn't been $20 since the back end of the dot com bubble. So Ford investors are very happy with this run up at the minute. But is this a buy? Well, that is the question. I originally talked about Ford on my channel on the 13th of May. And since then, it went from $11 to 20. So hopefully you guys bought it on that point. But what we're going to do is check if it's still a buy today. What we're going to do is look at the fundamentals of the stock, then look at uh, two models, dis discounted free cash flow and the Buffett Graham intrinsic value to work out the fair value of the stock. Let's get right into it. Give a like on the video and then let's get into it as I just said. Right, so Ford Motor Company, $80 billion market cap, uh, $20, cent $20 a share, sorry, 52-week uh, low of $8.48 and it's 52-week high, $20.79. Uh, the dividend is a 2.23% dividend and the ex-dividend date is in January. We're going to touch on a little bit more of that in a second and why that's interesting for the stock, but let's have a look at the five steps. So is the P ratio less than the market? No, it's not. 28.6 uh, with the market average at around about 25. So that is a fail, although this has been decreasing. So if I do this video now, it might actually pass. Uh, is the revenue increasing? No, it's not. It's gone from 160 million to 134 uh, billion. Sorry, that was a billion on both. Uh, so the revenue is down, but it is up from the prior year in the pandemic. Similar story with uh, profit. Uh, profit is uh, 3.6 billion to 2.8, but once again, uh, up from pandemic, but down from the prior years. So not looking good overall, but are they buying back their shares? Yes, they are 3.98 billion to 3.973 billion. So that is a pass. Ford are buying back their shares. And finally, is the free cash flow increasing? Well, Ford actually has some pretty good free cash flow, as you'll always see. 7.2 billion to 10.8. So that is a pass, and that is two passes at the end. Uh, three fails, two passes. Uh, free cash flow ratio, which is the market cap divided by the free cash flow, and that is 7.44, which is very, very low, much lower than the PE ratio, which is very interesting. You don't often see that. And once again, the dividend is a $1.8 billion dividend, uh, which is easily safe. So one thing I just want to see is that Ford actually has reinstated the dividend in the fourth quarter. They've reinstated their regular dividend payments in the fourth quarter, which has been a year and a half since they've previously done it. And it has a dividend payment of 10 cents a share. So Ford shareholders are pretty happy about this because it was a regular paying dividend stock and they stopped it during the pandemic. But basically, if we go back to um, trading view here, you can see when the dividend is shown, there you go, it should done there. And if we just go back in time, you can see that it hasn't been there since February of 2020, just before the pandemic. Just came at the right time for them, actually. Uh, so fundamentals, not looking too great, but you can see that they have a lot of free cash flow. So will this give a good valuation? Well, we've calculated the future free cash flows, based them on analyst estimates. Um, Around about 10 million, 10 billion in free cash flow, not really increasing massively because analysts have said the revenue will increase a little bit, but not massively. So I have been a bit reserved here to keep things in check. And what does that give a discounted free cash flow ratio of? Well, calculated stock price is 20, calculated stock price is $40. So basically, they're saying the stock can double. Uh, I think that is a bit unrealistic because if we go back to the chart, and see when the last time Ford was a $40 stock. Well, it was never a $40 stock. Uh, even at the height of the dot-com bubble, it was still shy at $38 a share. So I don't think this is very likely. Um, discounted free cash flow normally likes high free cash flow companies like this, which is why we also look at the Buffett Graham intrinsic value, which takes earnings per share and expected growth rate into account. Earnings per share is very low, but analysts do think that Ford over the next five years will grow at around about 16%. But one worrying thing here is this massive bond yield. So let's have a look what the grain price says. And actually, it says it has around about a fair value of 14.6 and a grain price of 40 point, sorry, 10.54. So they are saying that this is overvalued and it is an overvalued stock. 
Uh, the reason for this is because of these high bonds that Ford has. 8.85 uh, uh, was what I found. I even found a 9%. So if it was a 9%, then it's overvalued even some more because normally the corporate bond would be around about a 4.4%, uh, which would say that they were undervalued. And if it was a growing uh, company you'd probably be issuing bonds at around about 3.2 percent or even less but because they have a lot of junk uh, junk bonds with around nine percent they think the fair value according to this model is 13 dollars to um to 10. so discounting free cash flow says the stocks are buy i would be wary of that and the buffer graham intrinsic value says it's not it's worth around about 10 to 13 dollars and if we just go back in time uh, and look at when it was 10 to 13 dollars well, when I said it was a buy in May, and then again when it dropped down before this massive run up to its um, basically high it's been for a long, long time. So what we want to do now is just quickly have a look at some of the technicals to see what's happening here. Uh, one thing we're going to look at is the moving averages. So let me just add on my three favorite moving averages. Uh, I have a 50 day in green because that is the shortest of the moving averages I want to look at. Uh, and then I'll add a... 100 day in yellow because the this is a slightly longer um, moving average and see where that goes and then finally we'll add the 200 day which is the longest moving average that I like to add so let me just quickly add that in now um, probably should have preloaded this but hey ho what you're going to do and you can see well what is the bullish price movement we've seen here uh, the 200 day has definitely been a, a support point hasn't go beyond that and um, there was a golden cross here with the shortest day and moved across that but the key would have been here sort of a death cross there but then the price broke through the two shorter moving averages would have been a buy signal currently the price is way above the moving averages and um, so if it did drop down to once again 14 dollars a share that's probably a buy but 20 it's way above the moving averages uh, the next thing i want to look at is macd and this is normally a bit of a telling one uh, so let's just get the macd added up here and you can see that yep there you go when would it have been a good time to buy Ford? The MACD line crossed there at around about uh, $13 a share, and it's gone on a massive run-up. So you can say, oh, well, I missed out on that. But here, the signal line and MACD line crossed over the zero, which would have actually been an even better time because that's slightly lower, 13 and 10 cents a share, and has gone up dramatically. But what we can see here is the MACD line has crossed again, which is usually a sell signal. Um, Ford over the past two times is when it's crossed. It has been pretty good movement consistently. Um, you can see here in May and then before in January. But right now it is saying it is not a buy on the technicals. And if we look to the most recent one, you can see that it was around about uh, 16, sorry, around about $15 a share. And then by the time the MACD crossed again uh, for consistently it was 12. So MACD is also saying it's a sell. And if we just look at the RSI as well, now this is on the 14-day, um, so you can see it's actually in overbought regions and now dropping down again. And if we just actually change this to weeklies as well, you can see what it's doing once again, overbought. So technicals aren't saying it's a buy. Um, the discounted free cash flow is saying it is a buy, and the buffer Graham intrinsic value is also saying stay away. So overall, pretty negative on the stock. Right, guys, thanks for watching. Please give a like on the video if you enjoyed it, and I will catch you guys next time.